In this video, we'll go over using and manipulating technical indicators in programming with ProRealTime. So just like with constants, the ProRealTime platform can calculate technical indicators for us and let us use those in programs. These can be then used to create new indicators or define buying and selling conditions in a strategy program, for example. Let's add an exponential moving average to our chart and then see how we could use that in programming. I'm going to click the Add Indicator button here, search for Moving Average, click on Moving Average, and then click Add. Then here in the Method drop-down window, I can select Exponential. And I'm going to choose 10 periods. Now we have on our chart an exponential moving average of 10 periods. So here in my program, I'm going to define a variable called MA10 equals, and then I want to add the moving average function from the function library. So I'm going to click here on function library, and I can go into pro real time indicators and look for the indicator or just use the search function. So I'm going to search for moving average. And I see we've got lots of possibilities here. I'm going to select the normal moving average and click add. And the program has directly entered the syntax for me right here. So we see here in the program that we're calculating an average of 20 periods applied to the close. We want to change that to 10 periods. And if we want to use an exponential type of moving average, we can just insert a comma here and insert a type of moving average. Exponential moving average is type 1, so we can just enter that. But if we want to use a variable instead of a fixed type, we can just enter type here, for example. Then I'm going to click on add for variables. I'm going to add the variable called type. And I'm going to define it as an MA type variable with a default value of exponential and then click close. So the advantage of doing it this way is that you don't have to change the instruction here every time you want to change the type of moving average because there's also an instruction specific to the exponential moving average which is this instruction right here but this is always going to be an exponential average with the simple moving average command here and the type variable here we can choose the type directly without having to modify the program now let's return this on the chart return ma10 click add indicator to chart and we can see that the values here in my indicator are always the same on the chart and in my custom indicator. Let's add a second moving average variable to this indicator. I'm going to here define the variable MA2 equals average 20 type applied to the close and I'm going to return both MA10 and MA2. And here you can see I'm using the variable type in both. So when I change the type here, it will change in both moving averages at the same time. Let's say I wanted to use a different type of moving average for MA10 and MA2. Instead of type for MA2, I could just add type 2 as a variable. Click here on my variables, add type 2. 
I'm also going to define this as a type of moving average, and this one could be simple by default, for example. Click Add Indicator to Chart. Click on the Properties box here, and you see I can define Type and Type 2 separately. Now we can manipulate these variables to create other technical indicators or define market entry conditions. Let's create a new variable called difference, which will just be MA10 minus MA2. And here we'll just return difference on the chart instead of MA10 and MA2. So you can see in just a few lines of code here, it's pretty simple to manipulate values of technical indicators. We can also look at pass values to get the previous value of difference. For example, pass difference equals difference two bars ago. Remember we put that two in square brackets to indicate the number of bars ago when we're trying to get past values of variables. And here we can return both difference and pass difference by separating those with a comma and click add indicator to chart. Let's now look at a new example of how to use indicator values in programming. For that purpose, we will look at how to create a moving average applied to the Commodity Channel Index. First, let's add the Commodity Channel Index to the chart. To do that, I click here on the Add Indicator button. Search for CCI, or Commodity, and the Commodity Channel Index will come up right here. Click Add to add it to the chart. Here you can see the standard configuration of the Commodity Channel Index, and let's close this settings window. First, let's add the CCI indicator to the chart. To do that, I'm going to click here on Add Indicator, search for CCI, select it, and click Add. Here you see the standard Commodity Channel Index now we're going to add it into our program. I'm going to define my CCI equals CCI of 20 periods. Then we will calculate the moving average. MA equals average period and applied to my CCI. Now we are going to define the variable period by clicking on add right here. Enter the label in the program as period and click add. This is going to be an integer variable with default value 10 and click close. Let's add some comments to our code here. This is just the calculation of the CCI of 20 periods. This is the calculation of the moving average of the CCI. Now let's return the moving average and the CCI on the chart. I'm going to just enter return my CCI and MA. When we're ready, we just click Add Indicator to Chart here. And here's our indicator. I'm actually going to take away the color zones so that you can see it more clearly. Click Color Zone here, and then just delete. So here we have the same CCI line, and here is the moving average that's smoothing that CCI line. This is currently 10 periods, which we can see here for the moving average. And we can click on the wrench key here to modify that. Here we could make that 20 periods, for example, or set it back to 10. Finally, let's see how to add these threshold lines here of positive 100 and negative 100. 
I can actually just add those directly in the return instruction here. 100 and negative 100 separated by commas and click add indicator to chart to save the change. So here we have these two lines that are added and you can actually change their color to blue like this by clicking on the wrench here. Select these lines that we've just added and then we could click here to change the color for example. And here we have our two blue lines. Now if you want to change the names of the lines here in the indicators, we could actually do that directly in the program by using the as instruction. And then when we go in here, we'll be able to actually see the labels of the lines here by just adding as with the name in quotes after that.